guys and welcome back to another tutorial today we're going to be updating a older tutorial that I made uh, for a newer version of M Creator and uh, Minecraft so if you're not familiar with my uh, armor effect tutorial I did a scuba kind of tutorial on how to basically make scuba gear that will allow that will basically take damage uh, while it's being used in the armor slot. So the code is customizable. You can change it however you want. Um, I'll explain that in just a little bit. But uh, I have it currently programmed for basically um, basically swimming and stuff like that. So uh, when you're inside the plant blocks like uh, kelp, uh, seagrass, uh, coral, those main things, then um, you'll basically uh, take, uh, the armor will take damage. So over a period of time, uh, it's on a timer delay. So it'll basically uh, give a potion effect uh, for night vision or um, what was the other one? Water breathing, I think, is the other one. Night vision and water breathing. So when every update take that happens, and then what happens is it also deals damage. Uh, it's also, the condition is basically testing if you're in water, uh, submerged, or your head is submerged. So this is required. If you're sprinting, I think you're actually swimming when you're sprinting, or you're... you're you're sprinting when you're swimming, I think. I'm not sure if that's how it works or not, but we don't have a, um, a actual swimming function. So it seemed to work fine basically with the, um, how the uh, procedure is set up. So uh, basically this is the armor that I basically created. So as you can see, it looks pretty good. And uh, yeah, so when you jump into the water, uh, you can end up swimming, and if we open up our inventory, as you can see we have night vision and water breathing, and the armor is slowly taking damage. So as you can see it's slowly taking damage, one damage per update of the actual um, potion effect. So with that being said, let's hop into M Crater and I'll show you how it all works. So it's super simple. All you need is a armor element and two procedures. I added a couple recipes just to show you how to basically uh, craft up the items. Uh, if you're not familiar with the recipe system, then you put your items in this part that you want to craft it with and you can select your armor after you create your armor element and it'll generate a standard texture for armor here. So uh, yeah, you basically can craft your armor that way. Uh, with that being said, uh, let's go into the scuba. I have just the basic textures for the scuba armor itself. And then I have the uh, layer armor imported here. Now if you're not familiar with how to import layer armor for um, or layer texture for the armor then you go to the textures or resources textures files and then you basically go and import and then there's one called armor and then you would select your layer one and layer two. Now um, basically Layer one and layer two has to be at the end of your file name. Uh, layer one and layer two should not be the only name that you give it. So for example, it would be scuba armor layer one, scuba armor layer two. And when that's imported, then it'll import two different texture files down here under the textures for armor. You're also gonna need two textures for your icon armor or icons for your items as well. So with that being said, um, let's hop back in here, whoop, over here, and uh, the only difference is the armor equip sound that's been added uh, fairly recently, I guess. Um, basically, it just plays a sound when you equip it, uh, when you equip the armor, so that's fairly new. And then 
the repair items. Uh, so basically this is the armor item that you use to repair the or the the item that you use to repair the actual armor itself and i think it might be in a smithing table now in 1.16 uh 1.15 and below i believe it's um an anvil still so you can basically combine those and it will basically repair it so the two procedures that we have, uh, depending on which armor you want um, to basically add your effects to, uh, you have the helmet tick event, body tick event, leggings tick event, and boots tick event. Uh, we're only using the the um, body and helmet items, so. It's basically the same thing. We're just targeting two main, two differences, or, or doing two different things. The uh, first thing that we're doing is we're applying a different potion effect. The other thing is we're testing if the item is in a specific slot that's for that particular item. So if that's true, then what we do is we basically apply the um, potion effect on a timer. So. I'll try breaking this down as easy as possible. A lot of it's just conditions and I can probably skip over most of it. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll cover that as much as we can. So first things first, um, this is the helmet, I believe. Yeah, it's the helmet. So what we're doing is we're testing for the armor, if the item is in the armor slot, we're testing it for the provided item. So because this is running from the uh, helmet tick event, then what it's doing is it's testing for that particular item. So it's the helmet that we're testing for. We need to test to see if it's in slot three, which is the helmet slot of the armor of the entity. And then what we're doing is we're testing if the player is sprinting, and if that's not true, then it's going to be testing uh, if the player is not sprinting. Because if they're if they are sprinting, then it should do something. If it's not, then there it shouldn't do anything at all. So, well, it should do, still do something, but it should do something different. Um, the next condition that we're doing is we're testing for all the different types of blocks that we can basically apply the potion effect to. So what we're doing here on um, this one here uh, is we're testing if the um, the current block that the player is in, which is by the feet, um, is any one of these blocks. Now I have collapsed quite a few of them just to save space and performance. Um, I have the water blocks at the top, uh, any plants, uh, like regular plants, seagrass, uh, kelp, um, pickles, and stuff are uh, under this one here. And under these ones uh, are the coral and all the different types of coral. So um, this is required for basically applying it properly because if it wasn't in uh, if it wasn't being tested for, it would basically not apply the potion effect. So with that being said, what it's doing is if it finds any of these blocks by the player's feet and the entity is sprinting, so we're assuming that sprinting also applies to when they're actually swimming because there isn't a actual uh, block for that. So if that's true, then what it's going to do is it's going to set uh, a item and BT tag we haven't covered that before but if you go to the item procedures and scroll down to the nbt or the um, nbt logic variables and these variables here these are basically the same thing as entity nbt tags which are basically just variables for that particular entity or block so there's also block ones as well as you can see here uh, we need the item ones, which were basically, if you scroll down further, there's a set MBT logic variable. So we're setting the tag name item damage to the provided item 
and then we're basically setting it to true if, it, if any of these blocks are um, in the proper condition uh, or if the condition runs true. If not, then it's just setting it to false. This basically will make more sense later on. So if the player isn't sprinting um, or swimming, uh, what we're doing is under the else statement or right down here. So if they're not uh, sprinting, then what we need to do is we're testing if for all those blocks again, but the only difference is we're testing it one block above. Now default uh, location for if where the player is basically standing is where their feet is. So we need to increase it one for their head head area. So because of this, uh, we're basically testing if they're standing on water, then we want it to apply the um, effect if they're fully submerged. So this is basically where this comes in, exact same conditions as up here, just with a Y plus one um, variable system. So as you can see, it's exactly the same. Um, again, we're going to, if it's true, then it's going to basically uh, set the item uh, NBT tag to uh, true. If not, uh, if none of these conditions are true, then it's going to set it to false. So further down, just below this procedure where the entity is sprinting, I'm just going to collapse these two for now. So as you can see, this is its own thing, and then we have a another if statement just below it. Uh, it needs to be in that order or it won't work, so make sure that it's down below. Uh, we're actually testing for the uh, item damage, uh, that tag that we used up here. And if it's true, then what we're going to do is we're going to set uh, item timer. This is a new M uh, MBT variable for the item. And then we're going to uh, increase it by one. We're also going to get get it and then increase it by, or pardon me, not one, uh, 0.05, which is one tick. So uh, with every time it basically uh, is true, it's going to be updating every tick. Um, now when that uh, basically reaches four seconds or um, basically this number reaches four, which is exactly four seconds, then what it's going to do is basically test if it's equal to or greater than, and it's going to apply the potion effect. It's going to deal damage to the provided item, and then it's going to reset the time. So basically that's how it works. Uh, the only other thing is um, because this is the helmet, as you can imagine, the boots, or sorry, the chest plate is a pretty much the same thing. Uh, so down here is the boot or the chest plate, which is number two, same conditions. Um, the only difference is the armor slot, which is now two and the potion effect down here. So exact same thing though. Now if you want to customize this and say you don't want it to basically run if uh, they're in water or whatever, you can actually uh, take away this particular uh, procedure here and you can basically just um, delete all that and you can move this down, delete this. So you have a true or false. So say you have one condition. If the player is sprinting, apply the potion effect. If they are sprinting, then it's true. If, they, if it, they're not sprinting, then it should be false. So under the else, else statement, it always should be uh, the false variable. Um, basically, we're doing the exact same thing, but we have an extra condition with the uh, water effect, like testing for all the if they're in water or not. So um, you can add extra conditions and to the if statements, just make sure that they're the same or you're gonna run into problems. Anyhow, uh, that's basically how it all works. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, you can uh, comment down below or you can ask for help on my Discord server. Um, there's usually someone online that you can ask for help with. Um, just uh, make sure to ask in the M creator
Amp Creator help section and uh, not direct message any of the staff or anything like that on there. And um, most chances are that someone will be able to uh, figure it, help you figure it out. Uh, outside of that, uh, thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.